Is this which one? I hope you're as excited as she is. It's time to clean out the barn. We're gonna just jump straight to it and show you guys exactly how we do it. Good morning, everyone. It is that time. We gotta clean the barn out. Not a bad chore, uh, especially with the skid steer. Makes it a little quicker than it did with the tractor. So we're gonna go ahead and check fluids in the skid steer real quick, and we'll get out to the barn and go ahead and get started. Look at that. It's a full on hydraulic fluid. Let's check our engine oil real quick. We're a little low, but it's about where we've been the whole time. All right, good news, no warning light, but it's also not very cold out. Uh, I mean, it's cold enough to need glow plugs apparently, but it's roughly about 40 degrees, 35, 40, somewhere in there. Not terrible, I can live with it. sheep live for about three months of the year they come in here roughly December 15th and they leave approximately March 15th we generally clean the barn like actually scrape everything out clean it every two weeks sometimes we'll throw a little bit extra bedding down in uh, between those two week cleanouts if let's say really cold weather or something like that's coming as you've seen on previous videos we don't feel comfortable scraping it out with them in here because the visibility in a skid steer is minimal I can see in front of me really quite well. I can't see beside me very well. So when the booms are up or when the arms are up, I can see a little bit between these wheels, but I can't quite see exactly between them. I also can't see underneath the machine and I surely can't see back here at all. So pretty much anything from about here back, all blind spot all the way around to the other side on the same spot. It creates a bit of a problem. As you've seen with George going by, he waited until I stopped and was calm about it. These guys are not. These lambs, they're not used to machinery. And the other thing is, is that this is the machine they see when they see new bales of hay coming out. As you can see, they're due for new bales of hay. They've got, I don't know, probably half a bale left the way it's spread out. And I want to give them all that hay because they need it. Well, when they correspond food with a machine, they want to come near that machine. And then when mom comes near that machine, so do the babies. The lambs are really hard to see, they're small, and I'm not saying the adults are really all that smart, but they are smarter than the lambs in the aspect that if something's moving, they generally get out of the way, whereas the lamb sometimes freezes and doesn't move. Therefore, we are going to take all of them outside. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. This feedlot right here is where they're gonna stay for the probably hour or so, maybe two hours that it takes me to clear out the barn. So what I have to do, scrape that floor and then I have in that trailer that you saw behind me when we're in the front of the barn up here has the sawdust that's the bedding we use for them it's oak sawdust and it's fresh from the mill so it's not dry and dusty it's dry enough that it'll absorb urine but wet enough that it's not dusty so this is the bulk bin that we store our feet in and ironically enough viewers like you actually paid for it 
the little bit of money that we make off of our YouTube videos, which I do mean little, we actually made a video about it. So if you're really curious about it, go back on our YouTube channel and we show you exactly how much we make. It is not a lot. It takes me roughly six, or sorry, I make about $6 for every thousand views and it takes me roughly three-ish hours to edit the videos. So, you know, if you break that down to make about $2 an hour, um, like I said, we don't have a very big crowd because not a lot of people care about starting a farm. They like seeing the bigger farms that have the fancy machinery and everything else. We're not there yet. This is better than storing it in the gravity wagon like we used to do, but it can get better yet. We are going to scrape the floors from the bottom to the top and I'll make my piles on this side and on this side right behind me up top. I'll back the truck and trailer in and I'll back it all the way down so it's out of the way and I'll get all this old manure out of here and all this old bedding using the manure spreader that you saw outside hooked up to our Alice Chalmers 8030. We'll take that, spread it on the hay field. Then once we get it all spread and out of here, then we'll take our new sawdust and put it down.
here, the first barn, what we call the main barn. It's a transition from daylight to a lot less light. And then when we go to the livestock barn, the livestock barn has clear panels on the top. You can see quite well. But right in here, hopefully you can see that those lights help out tremendously. So we're gonna take this, go spread it on the apron. camera or not. This is kind of what I was talking about with that transition from daylight to dark back to daylight. You just can't see a whole lot. Probably didn't help that my windows are geared either. Machines get most of it, but there's still some spots we have to do by hand. This will show a little bit more about how the whole process works. So we scrape everything out and then we put down the new sawdust. Now the new sawdust isn't exactly new. It does come from a sawmill locally, but the logs that they are sawing are not kiln dried. So they still have the natural moisture in the logs, which is pretty handy and I'll show you why. So if you look at this, right, I can squeeze it and it kind of packs together. And if I throw it up in the air, it doesn't make a bunch of dust. And I have some right here that's actually dried out. It has been dried out for probably a month or better because it was on the trailer already. If I throw it, it puts a lot of dust in the air. I don't want that. That is why we get sawdust directly from the sawmill. If you get the, like the pine shavings, those pine shavings are kiln dried and they create a lot of dust too. Not very useful nor is it a good idea to have a lot of dust inside a closed space even though it's a large area it still is going to get very dusty very quick because these guys move around especially now with the lambs the lambs are running and enjoying themselves and playing it'll get real dusty in here real quick
Chrissy just got home from work. She was helping me set the bales out. So we cut all the twine off them. This one I was talking about how a lot of the hay debris that you see on the ground isn't from the feeders per se. I mean, it is kind of from the, the feeders. But it's because I didn't design it well enough. I should have had this either extend out farther or I should have made it more of a steeper V and basically had one side like this and one side like that and no flat bottom. That way it would embrace the edges of it because once we cut the net wrap or the twine, whatever is holding it together, it makes it to where it all just wants to flop over the top, like that one. We already threw most of this one back on. I'm gonna help Chrissy real quick and then we'll get everybody in. So I told him to go latch that gate up top just in case somebody goes and bumps into it and they all go run it out the front of the barn. So these guys, you'll see them, they'll like nibble on stuff they find in there. Nothing's made them sick yet. That's mud and you don't need to eat on it. Yeah, so you'll see they'll be looking at it. And these guys are over here eating. Everybody went to the creep feeder. They're all happy about that. And believe it or not, that is a lamb in there. That was our first born this year. And uh, he's grown pretty well. Pretty happy with it. Joy's in there just chowing down on her some, giving her some milk. Hoses and everything are all, they, we never disconnect them even when cleaning. These guys are over here just getting their drinks. And then that'll turn off once they get all their water. Only thing we have left to do is throw a little mineral in that trough for them and that's it. You should have seen it before, but we, we showed everybody how we make our mineral mix. And then, we don't generally put it in here like this, mainly because these guys are all gonna come right up here and just start checking it out. Some are gonna take a bite of it, not want it and spit it out because they don't want it at the moment. But as far as the feeders go, this is exactly how they work. The lambs are running around, it's just, it's a madhouse. These guys will sit up here and they'll eat right through the sides, those little four by four squares. Overall, really happy. Everybody looks good. Everybody's happy about the new bedding. So we're gonna leave them alone, let them enjoy the night. It's supposed to snow three to six inches tonight into tomorrow. So I'm sure we'll have something else going on tomorrow. Probably building the fort with the kids. I hope that answered anybody's questions they had about how we make our own manure and what we do with it. And who makes it? I mean, technically we don't make it. Technically the sheep make it. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a blessed week. We'll see you next time. What? You're okay? You're closer. You were last to me. But you're closer. Let's go get the kids and see who's right. Fine.